In today's video I have a coloured pencil tutorial for beginners. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour plus a little bit of mixed media and drawing too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for Patreon subscribers. Now years ago I didn't think anything of coloured pencils because I like really bright colour and coloured pencils always seemed very insipid to me. Well the good news is that manufacturers really upped their game and a few years ago they started producing much more highly pigmented coloured pencils and you can really get some absolutely stunning results. So in this tutorial I'm going to give you just a little introduction and a few basic techniques. Now I'll tell you about the materials that I'm using but I'm not going to go into huge detail about materials and brands and I'm not going to use any unusual materials either so we're not going to be using anything like blending solvents but if you are interested in those do let me know and I'll make other videos about coloured pencils for you. So in a moment I'm going to point the camera downwards and show you some really clever little tricks for getting the most out of your coloured pencils. This tutorial is perfect if you're a beginner but as always if you're a bit more experienced I think you'll find something of use in this tutorial. So first things first, I'm going to show you how to lay the pencil onto the paper and how to blend one colour into another and how to combine colours one on top of another to make new colours. It's really important with coloured pencils that you don't press too hard, particularly at the beginning of your work. Paper has a grain, even if you can't see it, it's what holds onto the pigment on the pencils. If you press so hard that you flatten the grain, you'll find that you can't lay any more colour on top. So let me show you first of all how to apply your pencil to the paper. So I'm working today on what we in the UK call cartridge paper. Now a lot of my American viewers <laughs> have complained that they have no idea what I'm talking about when I talk about cartridge paper. It's a really commonly used term here in the UK so it's quite hard to explain. Basically we use cartridge paper to describe any sort of good quality writing or sketching paper. So somebody last week said to me, oh you mean printer paper? So no I don't mean printer paper. I basically mean smooth good quality writing or in this case sketching paper. So if you bought a sketch pad that was not watercolour paper but that was much thicker and much higher quality than printer paper, that in the UK would be described as cartridge paper. So I shall try not to use the term. I shall try and use, I don't, do tell me what you, what you call it in America. I mean, would it just be, you know, writing paper and sketching paper? Is there another term that I don't know about? I try and make things friendly for uh, Americans. Right, so we have um, sketching paper, <laughs> nearly said cartridge paper again. And I've got some coloured pencils just out of shot here. So I'll bring this little thing forward. So I keep them in one of these. And um, I've got two main types really. I've got the Faber-Castell Polychromos and I have got the Derwin Color Soft, which let me grab one of those. There is a slight difference between them. I want to keep this video really accessible to beginners so I'm not going to go into um, huge detail about brands and things and if you've just bought some cheap colouring pencils you know or if you're using the kids ones do try and upgrade because you'll find them a lot better and they're all sold singly so you don't have to buy a whole pack of them. Now somebody last week as well I don't know if you can see when I edit this and cut the video down I don't know if you're going to see the drawing board but I am working on rather a grainy drawing board and somebody moaned at me about that last week on YouTube as well. Um, I mean they're right you know it would be a much smoother application if I were not on a grainy drawing board but there we are today it is what it is. So I've got my colour pencil here what have I got? Derwin Colour Soft Blush Pink. So um what you want to do when you start out applying your colour pencil is really keep your strokes very light. I'm just going to sort of, I don't think I'll just do a heart here, let's do a heart. Just keep your strokes, you know, very, very light and, you know, you can start filling in. You can always hold your pencil sideways like this and you're just looking at applying really, really delicately and evenly. Now I know this doesn't look very strong but we are going to build up colours as we go along. And there is that problem that if you press too hard initially you flatten the grain of the paper and what you'll find then is that uh, you can't get any more colour on. So you can always you know build up gradually, you can always go darker but it's quite hard um, as a medium colour pencil is quite hard to remove. I'm going to show you a trick for that later on but nevertheless it's not ideal to have to remove your coloured pencil. You don't have to stick to one brand here, you know, I'm just picking up any colours I want to use. There are differences in formulation between oil and wax and things like that, but um, let's, as I said, let's just keep this very accessible and beginner friendly at the moment. 
So what I'm doing here is layering two colours so that one blends into the other. And I'll go a bit more, so I'm going to go a little bit more purple up here, start building that up a bit more strongly. So there's various things you can do. You can layer like this and get one colour that fades into another. You can also layer in order to get another colour, a new colour, because obviously, although they're not mixing on the paper like paint would, they still overlap and you'll still get this um, almost pontillism effect where one colour shows through the other. I'll show you in a minute with, uh, with blue and yellow and we'll see if we can make some green. But in this case, I just want one colour to be sort of fading evenly into the next colour. And so I'll go stronger with the purple up here and then we'll let it fade through. And of course, I can go stronger this end with the pink and we can get quite a nice sort of gradation coming along. The edges are a little bit scruffy at the moment. I'll show you how to neaten those up later on in the video, so don't worry about that. You can see we're just starting to lay the colour on. And yes, if I were on a smoother background rather than a grainy drawing board, I would get a slightly smoother application. But again, there are tricks for smoothing that out, which I'm also going to show you later on. So initially, I just want to show you how to start laying down the colour. Let's try and overlap colours now and see what we get. So if I do, let's do sort of almost like a leaf shape with this yellow. I'm going to go on top now with some blue. I'm going to press fairly lightly. So you can see there we're getting that impression of green happening. Now with many mediums, particularly things like oil paints and watercolours, people can work in quite a limited palette. And you can, you can overlap your pencils like this to get more colours. But typically when people use dry media like soft pastels and coloured pencils, you do find that they tend to own a lot more colours. Now these pencils can be expensive. One of my students used to go to uh, classes in coloured pencils and it was in an art shop and um, an art shop where I used to work sometimes and every time she went to um, a coloured pencil day or course she would just buy one or two pencils and you know if you keep doing that if you buy one or two pencils every single week you're going to end up with a huge amount of pencils and um, you won't have noticed the expense too much and nor will anyone else in your house. A very amusing thread in my Facebook group this week of people, um, there's several people actually chatting and uh, talking about ways of avoiding one's husband finding out how much money you've spent on art materials. I personally find that if you're at the boot of your car, if you place all of the bags into one bag before you enter the house, it can look like you've spent less money. Unfortunately, I don't have a husband. I mean, unfortunately, or unfortunately, because I don't have to sneak anything into my house. I can be completely blatant about how much money I've spent on things. So there we are. We've layered the blue and the yellow over the top, and uh, we've ended up with green. And here we've got a nice transition from the purple to the pink. I'm going to show you later on how to make that smoother and stronger in colour. So you will have noticed that when you apply the pencil to the paper, you still get rather a grainy effect. So now we need to blend. There are many ways of doing this, including solvents that you can buy, but I want to keep it really simple for this tutorial. We're going to use a blending tool. So let me show you the amazing effect it has. It was a real game changer for me when I discovered a blending tool. I'm also going to show you something else you can use if you don't have one. So now we're going to use a blending tool. As I said at the beginning of the video, there are certain spirits and things you can buy in bottles that you can actually apply with a brush to blend your colored pencils. I'm not going to go into those more complex methods today. We're keeping it simple. I've got this blending tool here and um, I was amazed actually. So if we have a look at this heart here, I was amazed once I started using this. I kind of, I picked it up. One of my students had one. I hadn't done a lot of colored pencil work and I, I picked it up and um, I thought I'll just have a little go with that. And it was amazing how quickly I, it went from sort of, you know, something that looked really kind of gimmicky to something that I then felt that I could not live without. So this will smooth and blend everything. As I said, I'm still getting some grain here because I'm on a grainy wood surface. I don't tend to work in coloured pencils much myself unless I'm doing mixed media, simply because it's a time consuming medium and I normally need quick results. So before you ask me what this, um, what this tool is made of, I have absolutely no idea. It's kind of gritty, it's much harder than an eraser, and you sharpen it just like a pencil. Quite important as well, if you need to, to clean it off. If I was going to blend something that was white now, I might find that it had picked up a bit of stuff. As it is, I think we'll just go over here and we'll blend this leaf in a bit, and you just start to get a much more beautiful effect. As I said, I've got some graininess there from the wooden drawing board, but the pencil itself is blending beautifully. 
what it's doing is it's pushing it into all the little gaps in the paper. You can't see the gaps because they're so tiny, but it's pushing it into the gaps so that you get a much more filled in effect and it's much, much prettier. Now, if I can find them on Amazon, I will put some links in the video description. Please be aware that those are affiliate links. If you buy one of these pencils, I will probably earn, you know, the 200th part of a cup of coffee. So if that distresses you, you can um, find find your own link but um, I'll try and link to these they're not always in stock but I'll try and link to these in the description this is a Derwent blender and if you don't have one of these you can use a white colored pencil I know some professional artists that only use a white pencil they actually prefer it to the blending tool so that's a matter of preference what you have to understand with the white pencil is that it will deposit some white on your paper so as well as blending in the other colors it's also going to add this kind of creamy sort of misty opacity and softness to your picture. Now that is neither a good nor a bad thing, you know, that depends if that's what you're looking for. So if you think that um, you would quite enjoy all your pencil work having a nice sort of soft misty finish, or if you think that would annoy you, you know, there's the answer as to whether or not you need to buy a blending tool. Worth having a go at this. And as I said, if you haven't got a blending tool, then this is an alternative that you could at least have a go with you know, if you do decide to order one, you could have a go with a white pencil while you're waiting. Now we've applied colours lightly and we've layered colours over the top and we've blended colours. But what if you want really strong dark lines? My next technique is going to show you how to get the maximum amount of pigment on the paper. So you can see we've got some scruffy edges here and also these aren't very dark. What if we want an area to be really, really dark? Now, in order to smarten this heart up, what I can do is I can get a pencil that's been sharpened. So it's got a nice sharp edge and I can go along the edge here and press quite hard. You can get an amazing amount of accuracy and neatness actually with colored pencils. So I'm going around the edge there. Now it's looking rather outliney. So what I'm going to do is bring that colour in so that we don't get the impression that there's an actual outline there. And I'm actually at the top going to go into some blue. This is a little blunt, this pencil. I should probably have sharpened this. So if you want that sharp edge, do make sure your pencil is sharp. So again, I can go around the edge here. I mean, maybe I might want an outline like that. I mean, I'm just doing a heart here. But of course, you know, you might be doing something more specific, like a flower or a bird. So whether or not you'd want an outline would be depend on what you were looking at. And again, I can take more colour in here. So I'm pressing harder now. Really important that you don't press hard until you sort of are putting those final touches on because it does get to the point where the paper grain is saturated and you literally can't fit anything else on there. Again, I can go back now and blend. Let's go back to blending with the white pencil. I can start getting that nice blended effect. Now what if you have a whole area that you wish to fill in really dark, perhaps the eye of an animal? What you want to do then is go in with tiny circles. You want a quite sharp point. Let's get this paper castel. We've got a black here. You want quite a sharp point and say that we've got, let's say we've got um, an animal eye here with a tiny highlight. What we're going to do now is go in and I'm making tiny, tiny circles here. By making tiny circles and pressing fairly hard, what we're doing is we're filling in the grain of the paper so that you can see we have no gaps at all compared to the first applications that we did. Even without blending, we're getting no gaps at all here because we're pressing hard and we're doing tiny, tiny circles so that everything is filled in. As I said, only do this at the end because if you do it too early on, once you've got that dark there and you've almost burnished the paper, you're not gonna get any more colour onto that, certainly not with a coloured pencil anyway. Now to some extent with coloured pencils you can work on top with white and also things like gel pen, but I've got a much better way of getting tiny tiny faint white lines. We're going to use an embossing tool and again I've got an alternative if you don't own one. So let me show you how it's done. So what I've got here is an embossing tool. I was very taken by this actually because it reminds me of one of those pens I had when I was a kid where each time you press down, you've got a different color, um, different color pen. But with this, what you actually get is a different size nib. And if I put it up close to the camera like that, hopefully you can see that it's just a, uh, a point with a little ball on the end. So it's a point that isn't sharp, basically. Now, don't worry if you don't have one of these. I will try and find this one or something similar and link in the video description. But there are alternatives. So I'm going to show you how to use it, first of all, and then I'll tell you what you can do if you don't have one of these. 
Now we're going to make a dent in the paper. So I'm going to start to draw with it here and press into the paper. Now, if this were watercolour painting and we made a dent like this, what would happen is that when we went over the top with watercolour paint, the paint would sit in the dips and you would get a dark line appear where we had embossed. However, something completely different happens when we're working on smooth paper and we're talking about coloured pencils because the opposite happens. When we do the coloured pencils over the top, they're going to skim across the top of the dips. Because they're not liquid like paint, they won't go into the dips. So I've drawn kind of a leaf shape and what I'm going to do now is go over the top. Now this is so much neater and so much more accurate than trying to draw white lines with a white pencil and you get a really excellent result. But the best thing is you don't even have to use it for white paper. So if I put some yellow pencil down here, what I'm going to do next is take the embossing pen over the top. I'm going to make a spiral shape this time and then we're going to go on top with a darker colour. So let's try this magenta colour. What happens this time is that we're actually reserving a yellow line rather than a white line. And I don't know if you can imagine, but this is actually a wonderful thing to do as well when you're trying to make something like animal hair. You can begin to layer up. So there we've got some white hair. And then if we go in again, and with a darker color, you can see how you start to get that fur type impression. This technique also works really well for feathers. So what if you don't have an embossing pen like this? Well, there are alternatives. This type of pen is actually quite unusual. Normally you get little sticks that have a single point on. So you get the embossing points singly. They also sell them for nail art. So if you've ever had a go at applying nail varnish, perhaps in patterns, I don't do my nails myself. It's nice of all of you to comment, but um, it's not my artwork. It's uh, lovely Sophie's artwork. So if you ever use those nail tools where you put the little patterns on with the little tools that you get for that purpose, you can use those for embossing as well. Another option is to get a ballpoint pen like this one that's run out of ink. That works well as well. One other option is to use a scalpel like this. So this is often used again for watercolour painting, but we can do the same thing for coloured pencil. Now, I actually prefer an embossing tool to using this because it is very risky scratching like this on paper that's as thin as this. It's much safer to do it on watercolour paper, which is much thicker. And if you do use this tool, you want to be careful that you don't have the blade upright because obviously it's going to cut a hole in your paper. But that also will get you some lines. You can see they're quite thin lines. The advantage of the embossing tools is that you can use a much thicker point if you want to. But it really is an absolutely fabulous way of reserving fine white lines independent of using a white pencil. At this point in the video, can I ask you quickly to do me a favor? If you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, can I ask you please to click the like button to click that thumbs up? So YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. So if you can like, share, subscribe, or even leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. And I'm very grateful to all of you who watch me on YouTube. So what if you've laid some pencil on your paper and it's a mistake, you don't want it there and you want to lift it out? My next trick will show you how to lift out areas of colored pencil. It may not take the paper back to white, but it will lift out enough that you can adjust the area and rescue your picture. So what happens if we've laid down some pencil and it was either in the wrong place or perhaps we've done it too dark or we forgot to lift out a highlight? What we can do is take this, this is sticky back plastic, it's the stuff that you get for covering school books, things like that. And what we can do is we can go over and press. So I've pressed the sticky back plastic, the sticky side down on top of the colored pencil area. And I'm going to lift some of the pencil out like that. Sometimes it's necessary to do it more than once. And it generally won't take every single last scrap of colored pencil out, but it'll certainly take out enough that you can go over with another color. Now there are many ways of using colored pencil. There's no saying that you have to do photorealism with them, but the truth is that most people that work in colored pencil are people that enjoy working really, really slowly. And so they tend to do this very, very detailed work. 
I remember when I first did a colored pencil drawing, it was actually my mum's dog. He's a Springer Spaniel and I did his head in colored pencils. Very, very happy with it. And then I started to put the background in. I wanted a nice red background and it took me ages. It took me ages. My hand was hurting. I used up so much of my red pencil. I kept sharpening and sharpening. It was only later on that I learned about a technique that colored pencil artists use that speeds up this process completely. Let me show you a really fast hack for putting in your backgrounds. So the trick for putting fast backgrounds in behind colored pencil work is soft pastels. So you can see that you can cover a much larger area. However, they're not very neat, are they, for going up to the edge of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop close to the edge of where we're working. We're gonna blend in with fingers. And then what I've got here is what's called a torsion. So it's a rolled paper stick and it's for blending and it also can be used for taking that colour right up to the edge of where you're working. Now this isn't the only kind of blending stick. You can also get things called colour shapers. Other types of blending tools can be used. The pastel is matte. It fits in with the pencils absolutely beautifully. Now it's important that you use a pastel like this. This is a soft pastel. These are the ones that are like soft chalks. You can use some of the harder pastels like Conte and pastel pencils. It'd be a little bit more difficult to get a smooth effect, but certainly worth trying. What you want to avoid is using oil pastels or crowns or anything wax based because you won't get those lovely blending techniques. I'm not saying it's impossible to use them in the background, but it certainly would be a lot more noticeable that you'd gone in with a different medium. Now, I know that many of you enjoy using those adult coloring books. You know, they're very relaxing and mindful. It's a great way of being creative, particularly if you're feeling a little bit under the weather or a little bit tired and you just haven't got the energy for making up a picture from scratch. Now, this next hack is going to add some beautiful sparkle and shimmer to your colored pencil drawings. This is a technique that's very popular in the coloring book world. We love those coloring books. They're so relaxing. So this technique not only adds shimmer and sparkle, it's really quick and easy to do. It gives great results and you've probably already got what you need in your house. So I've got here some uh, some sparkly vegan eyeshadow actually. I don't wear this one anymore because um, I find that now I'm a little bit older that the cream shadows look a little bit better and I've just tipped a little bit into the lid. Now there are lots of specific products that are designed particularly for this. You can get all sorts of powders that you can uh, use in crafts and painting and of course there are things like gold leaf and fake gold leaf as well. But actually eyeshadow works just as well. So I'm gonna pick some up on my brush and just start applying it. Now I could use fingers if I was looking for more of a, uh, a soft abstract approach, but a nice brush like this just applies it a little bit more neatly. I will try to link to the products I've used today in the description of this video. And whilst you're in the video description, don't forget that I do have several free downloadable PDFs that you can grab for no money at all. So I don't know how well that shows up on camera. We're in artificial light here. Um, it's the middle of winter in the UK and the light is terrible, but hopefully you can see some of the shimmer on that. Really, really pretty. And it's really a fantastic technique for things like butterfly wings, beetles, anything a bit shiny and iridescent or anything you just want a little bit of sparkle on, perhaps a dress, or perhaps you like making fantasy art unicorns and fairies. Why not add a little bit of sparkle to them? To be honest, I'd probably put it on things like flowers too. So do let me know in the comments which of these techniques you like the best. It's so funny, there's always one that everybody talks about and I never know which one it is until after I filmed the video. I am trying this year to put more content out of different mediums other than watercolour, but we're still gonna have a ton of watercolour content here as well because it is, as always, my first love. If you enjoyed this video, I know you're gonna love the one that I made about watercolor pencil hacks. You can watch that video right now.